on the previous video about integration and numerical integration, I talked through all of the Riemann sums, the rectangle areas, and the trapezium sums, or the trapezium rule, ways of numerical integration. And I mentioned Simpson's rule, which uh, I was all dem I was demonstrating on this file, and I showed how to build all the rectangles, uh, but I didn't show how to build the Simpson's rule, which is where you use quadratics to cover the top of the rectangles. And obviously that's gonna be better if you're trying to approximate a curve by approximating it with a curve, rather than straight lines, which is what the trapezium. But quick reminder, the uh, the rectangles where you use flat lines to approximate it, the trapezium where you use uh, angled lines. Um, and these are orders of polynomials. You've got order zero, order one, which is linear, and order two would be a quadratic. So we're gonna build the Simpsons rule version of this in this separate video, but it's a little bit more fiddly to build, so I thought I'd do it separately. So I'm gonna start with a brand new GeoGebra window. Uh, I'm going to grab a function that I, I was using before. I just put that in there and let's make it sort of fit our window. I, I just wanted a, a, a loopy function so I can test that it goes negative and things and it's nice to demonstrate increasing and decreasing areas and things. Uh, and as ever, we are going to control everything with a slider for the number of strips. Let's make it an integer. It's easy there. Um, and for Simpsons, it's going to need to be even. Uh, so I'm just going to force it to stay even for now change its properties and uh, put that on a two. Okay, uh, we had some limits. Let's just quickly make them again. I'm gonna put some dots on the axes and uh, the X of A and X of B are gonna be the left and right limits of the integration. And I want to make a list of the points between those limits on the function. That is what we did last time. So let's use the sequence command on a sequence of coordinates, uh, which have the format x and f of x, but yeah, so let's let's use capital X and f of, no, I'm doing a sequence here, so yeah, this is, this is right, let's, f of capital X, I'm making this up as I go along, can't remember what we did last time, uh, the variable is going to x and it's going to start from x of a, and it's going to end at x of b, but I would like it to go up in steps of the whole range, which is x of b minus x of a, divided by n, that's going to give me the number of strips. And I think that's the command that gets us everything. Yeah, so we crank it up and that's all the points along the curve. Uh, they give me seven regions, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven regions, and that changes with the limits, good. So instead of chopping this uh, region into rectangles, what I'd like to do is chop it into quadratics, but to model a quadratic, we need three points. To get a trapezium, two points, one end and the other end, fine. Uh, to to fit a second order polynomial, we need three points. So that's why you need an even number of points. Every trio, which is two strips, is going to become one quadratic. So the number of strips needs to be even. So we've got pairs of strips to model a quadratic on top of. And that's what makes this slightly difficult because I kind of need the list. Uh, the different points do different functions. Like the the um, odd numbered points are going to be the ends of the quadratics and the evens are going to be in the middle so it's going to be helpful to get a list of the odd numbered points let's see if we can do that let's call it odds um and i think the easiest way to do this is probably just to use a sequence command again and use the element command which grabs an element from a list so we'll just do an element command i haven't even named the list of points it's called l1 so i'll use l1 let's say i want the positions k and k just needs to be going for the odd numbers so start at one end at i'm not sure where i need to end to make sure i pick up the last odd one let's go one more but go up in two so that last argument is how how far it's jumping up and if n is even i think that's fine let's see what happens Ah, I see, I made it go up in twos, but I didn't tell it to start at zero. Let's start at two, and then we will get definitely even, that even number of strips. That's that's confusing. Okay, is this? I think it's working. Uh, if you click on an, an object, it'll, it will highlight that it's selected, and this is picking up the last point, which is useful. Okay, so these are the odd points on my list. Um, to plot a quadratic, I need to get three points. I need a list of those trios. So let's get those trios. Let's make a, a new list. It's going to be called trios. And I want it to run through that list and take sets of three. 
I'm not, I don't think I need the odds list yet. I think I'm going to use the odds list for the sort of limits. Okay, let's just get the trio. So this is going to be another sequence. And I want to create a list of lists of trios. So let's make this list and let's just simply do element from L1 in position K and another element from position from L1 in position K plus one and another element from list L1 in position K plus two and K this time I think again needs to go from one to N plus one in steps of two. So it's kind of like the same thing I just did to get the odd things. Yeah, you can see this is a list of trios now. Let's have a look at the first one. That looks right. And each trio starts and ends. So the, the first trio ends with this 2.031 and the next one starts with that, which is kind of what I want. So now I need to fit quadratics to each of these little trios. So the first one is that one, that one, and that one. I need to fit a quadratic. And this is where Jojo's commands come in really handy. There's a command called fit poly, which fits a polynomial to a list of points. So uh, for example, if I listed, I'm not even going to do an example. I'm just going to use this fit poly command and run through that list of lists. So we're going to zip it together. The zip commands are so useful. I'm going to zip the fit poly commands grab a list and I want to degree two to get a quadratic and I just want to get the, the lists of tr three points from the trios list and hopefully this will produce a whole bunch of quadratics. There we go. Now uh, this looks a mess because the quadratics are only valid when they're on the three points and it's plotted the whole quadratic. So the other thing I need to do is limit each of the quadratics to be only valid between the start and end point of the strips. So let's do another zip. I could probably put this all in one list, but this is probably useful to see it all built up. So let's zip the function command. Let's you specify a function and its start and end. So let's say a function is capital F and it starts at A, ends at B. I need to just figure out where to get the those F, A, and B from in list. So the, the functions will come from the, the L2 I, I just made. And this is where I'm going to do the odds because the A's uh, maybe I need to basically I want the the x values of the points in the odd functions to be the start points each time so I just need x of a and x of b I'm a bit worried about how to get the b at the moment but if a comes from the odds I need b to come from the same list but shifted a long one and I don't have a list for that, so let's do. I could just do the the last. There is a command called last for the odds, and I just want to remove the first one. Is there an easy way? I'm just going to take the last length of the odds is the length of that list. So, on the length of the odds minus one, the last n minus one of an n length list. I think that'll do it. Right, I didn't spit out an error message. Let's turn off the big functions. And let's turn off the original function. Look at that, we've got nice quadratic functions in between each set of three points. So I think that's doing what it should. It's so good that it's quite hard to tell. They, there you go, you can see some errors creeping in because that is an extreme curve to try and approximate with a quadratic perhaps. Uh, but that's kind of, I feel like I'm seeing what I should see. And there's a quadratic trying to do that steep. Um, this is what, this is a quintic or something. So it's never going to be correct, but this is promising. So what I'd like to do then is show the integral of those quadratics in each double strip. And just for the sake of visualization, I'm going to use the integral command because there is a command in there that takes a function and says start and end. So just like I used to define these functions to limit it, I'm going to just do the integral of the, the functions from L2, the, the full functions. So F, I'm going to zip this. So f is going to come from L2s, and I just need the starts and ends again. So x of a, exactly like before x of b. I probably should have defined that last few items of the odds. I just defined it in the command, but I'll just do it again. So a is going to come from the odds, and b is going to come from the last of the odds uh, with length, length of odds weirdly self-referential minus one 
Did I delete there? I think that's one of them. I didn't spell length correctly. Yeah, I did. I balance brackets. Add more. What's going on? Delete more. Delete more. There we go. <laughs> if in doubt, delete more brackets. And now we have these little integrals between each set of three. There's a quadratic under it. You can see it's integrating under that quadratic and then doing a new quadratic and doing a new quadratic. And that, uh, if I sum that list, that's a list of integrations. Let's do the sum of L4. That is the integral uh, between A and B, approximated using Simpson's rule. And if we want to check whether that's any good, we could actually just do the integral. Uh, and actually, Judge was doing this numerically pretty accurately. But let's go back to the original function, go from x of A to x of B. Uh, and lo and behold, the actual integral is that. And when I crank up the number of strips, you can see it's getting it pretty well. In fact, it, can, it converges really quickly. When, when you try and plot with a few points, you get crazy quadratics. Obviously, this is going to be way out. You crank out the number of strips, and we've got a really good numerical approximation. So that is how I made this file with Simpsons are all here. You could have GeoGebra force it to pick a, an even number of strips with an if command in here, but it's a, bit, a little bit fiddly. And I think in this case, yeah, I don't think I did any other tidying up on this function. It's exactly how I just built it. And you can see the, the inaccuracies kicking in when I try and cover extreme bends with this. Anyway, so that's the Simpsons rule upgrade to finish the story of the numerical integrations. Um, it's a nice little puzzle to get the list commands in GeoGebra to do that. It's also a nice demonstration of numerical integration. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, look forward to seeing you next time.